it's another episode of Let's Find Out where we do experiment on photography and movie making so you don't need to. And in today's episode, there's this saying that goes by shoot low F number so that you get nicer picture. How true is this? Let's find out. And tomorrow for episode, the lovely shooting. Let's start the experiment by taking shots with various F number. We'll start low, F1.4, and then move on to F2, 2.8, F4, 5.6. These are all called true stops. Second experiment, let's find out with F number as low as F1.4 and my focused lock recompose method of focusing, will it make my model of shooting look blurry? Let's compare this with F2.8 and F4. Ouch, subject's eyes are blurry when I use F1.4 or F2 with focused lock recompose method of focusing. So, if you're using F number lower than F2, you want to avoid using focus lock recompose. Move the focus points instead. And what is focus lock recompose? Watch this episode here and learn how you can quickly attain focus by using this method. Well, one thing I know as a professional photographer is that viewers of your pictures love blurry background because they will think that, wow, it's taken by an expensive camera. But at what F number will they start looking sharp all the way, looking like cell phone pictures? Well, just to find out, we're going to take exactly the same composition with our smartphone and let's compare in the computer. Don't be fooled with the F1.7 of the smartphone because as we compare with the F number of the DSLR, despite the fact that we increase the F number, even at F5.6 or F8, it is still blurrier than the smartphone. So there's no way you can beat the beautiful blurry background of the DSLR. You see those lights behind shooting? Those kind of lights are what make professional photographers go crazy with our bokehlicious. Bokehlicious is a term that photographers use to describe photos that have beautiful, blurry subtle background like this. Okay, a Japanese word. And delicious, which means very deliciously okay photos. So we're gonna vary our F number to find out at what F value it gives you the nicest bokehlicious. Well, looks like F1.4 produces very beautiful background, but F2 is not too bad either. But I guess I would not take the risk since 1.4 and F2 always give me blurry subject. I will perhaps go for F2.8. And looks like once it's after F4 onwards, the bokeh lights at the back are not that beautiful anymore. Subscribe! Subscribe! And hey, hit the bell! Did you subscribe? Yes, I do. Did you? Don't forget, hit the bell button when we got new videos, you know, subscribe, subscribe. Are you subscribed yet? She just lied. Yep. You lied. You lied. You cut the last Yeah, sorry. Otherwise, the number don't match. Yeah, doesn't match already. He went and then... Congratulations! We know you've gotten yourself that brand new camera finally. Don't you think it's time for you to improve on your photography skill as well? In this series of lessons, you'll learn three important aspects of how to make your pictures look stunning like those shot by professional photographers. Sharp and nice. And master one of the most frequently used modes by professional photographers. Autofocus single, autofocus auto, or autofocus continuous. You learn to be able to walk into any part of the room, any part of location in the world, 
and still get perfect exposure. Choose the right aperture value to blur the background or sharpen it. Landscape shots that look stunning like this. And at the same time, you also learn how to manage this exposure meter. Stick to F2. Focus, lock, recompose. You learn excellent compositional rules, five of them. How to perfectly get beautiful stunning shots all the time. Very bright outdoor location. Let's learn the correct workflow on how to get this beautifully in the digital workflow. If you increase the intensity of your light hitting your subject, the shadow that he or she cast will be darker. You also realize that the light comes from this side and nowhere else. So you can actually look at every photo and decipher exactly if you distance the light to whatever that's blocking it, the shadow would have a hard edge. It's called the umbra. And this part is called the penumbra. And by looking at this property, I will know how far the photographers put the light away. My favorite property of shadow, adding colors to shadow. If you have a wall that has no light, you can add colored light to it. And it is so that you can see the first ISO that you can get. My favorite ISO is 200. As high as you can go with the F number, F16 is my all time favorite. And my shutter speed is 200 to ensure that I don't break the sync speed. Now let me show you what happens when you take this shot and adhere to the front of your flesh. Make sure that you leave a gap like so. Otherwise, you're going to burn them. Point proven that you can only add color to shadow. And the wall is nearer to the light source, you're going to get more feathered shadow. So looking at this shadow, this is your ambient. And looking at this mid-tone here, this is your flash value. So if we can find out what is the difference between ambient and flash value, but let's wrap our head around on the area of illumination for now. Here are some photos with large area of illumination. And here are pictures with smaller area of illumination. Well, I'm sure you would have understood this all this key means that more shadowy pictures with more focused light and smaller lights. And this is exactly why we need to learn Big Five. You're probably asking me now, how do I determine and visualize the coverage when you're using studio strobes like this and also hot shoe flashes like this? Let me show you two ways you can do this. So you would probably use a high F value of F11 or F16 to do this shoot here. And then look at this location here. It's dark. And you would know by now in natural lighting, you have to drop your F value to maybe F2 or F4 to perform now, the shoot. I would need to shoot at this F value to get this side of the face to mid-tone. And to get this side of the face to mid-tone, I would need to use a lower F value. Coming here is a modified light. And if you use a hot shoe flash on a small to medium-sized modifier, they will always cut away two stops of light. Right after you figure out the area of illumination, let's figure out the intensity of coverage. What gives you F4 on modified light coming here? So looking at lighters cheat sheet, we know that our hot shoe flash needs to be at a power one.